back. <clears throat> the chair recognizes the gentleman from Colorado, Mr. Buck. I thank the chair. Um, Mr. Roy, I wanted to uh, visit with you about a few of the uh, comments you made earlier, if you're willing to engage with me. Yes, sir. Um, I'm wondering, uh, do you know uh, approximately in the last few Congresses that we have served together how many bills passed by suspension? Well, I, I don't know the number, but it is a, it is a large number. In I the mean, hundreds? Uh, hundreds, yeah, hundreds okay. of bills by suspension. And, and other than our friend from um, Kentucky, most of the people in the House vote for those bills that pass by suspension. I might have the second most number of no's to my friend from Kentucky, but it was, it was pretty high. And by the way, we objected to a lot of that in order to protect the American people. Right, and make sure that we had the time to read those bills before we voted for those Correct. bills. But um, if there was a common sense regulation that was passed by the administration that cost more than $100 million, would it be fair to say that that bill could be brought under suspension fairly quickly, passed, and we would have the result where Congress, Article I Congress, saw that and, and, uh, and, and certainly a drug that's going to save lives. It's, it's certainly possible to do that under the rules. Um, and, and isn't it uh, true, or let me just ask you, I won't do a leading question, but um, uh, when the Magna Carta was signed, uh, did it require the parliament to yield to the king, or did it require the king to yield to the parliament? It was fairly revolutionary uh, in the transformation. And, and, and isn't our Constitution based on that same concept? It is. And isn't Article I of our Constitution dealing with legislative power because our founders believed that Article I was the most important article in the Constitution? Absolutely. And which aren't we on a hill overlooking the executive branch because we are supposed to be overlooking the functions of the executive branch? Isn't it, that the, the plan that they came up with to make sure that, that the visual was there, that, that the White House is lower geographically than Congress, the White House looks up to Congress, and there is a mall that people can gather on and petition Congress. You can't walk into the White House and get through security. You can walk into your member's office, knock on the door, and ask to speak to your member. You can't go to the Supreme Court and ask to speak to a Supreme Court justice. You can in this Congress. We are accessible as opposed to the administration. And isn't that what the Reins Act is all about, is asking people to, uh, uh, bureaucrats to understand that we're responsible. We've got the power of the purse. We're responsible to the people, and they should come to us if they have uh, a need for an expensive regulation. Yeah, the gentleman from Colorado is correct, and that is what is such, so extraordinary about how uh, my colleagues on the other side of the aisle uh, just seem to just whisk away the whole purpose of a republic, the whole reason that we have a republic where we're supposed to represent our constituents and do so in such a way that we are restraining a over uh, burdensome, powerful, and potentially tyrannical executive branch. It was literally why our system was created and all we're trying to do here, and by the way, was supported on a bipartisan basis in previous years. This passed on a bipartisan basis in 2017. Only now do our colleagues believe somehow standing up for Article One over Article Two is uh, going to be dangerous in their words. And is this Reigns Act, does it apply equally to a Republican administration and a Democrat administration? It, it does and should. And uh, are there subcommittees set up in the House so that uh, subcommittees could hear these very important, very expensive regulations and make recommendations to the body? Absolutely. And by the way, to the arguments of saying there's all these experts over in the administrative state, I would posit that that's part of the problem. Uh, but, but if they're going to bring their expertise, they can present that in summary form and say, here's why this regulation is necessary and we can make a decision in subcommittees or committees as to whether or not it's worth $100 million and doesn't step on the rights of our citizens or doesn't spend money that we don't have. We can do that. And, and my friends on the other side of the aisle keep talking about a democracy, and you keep talking about a republic. Could you tell me the difference, please? Well, and it seems like that is completely lost in this town, that, that we created a republic on purpose so that those of us who represent our constituents can come here and make decisions that we think is beneficial for the uh, republic and keep in mind the laws, keep in mind the Constitution, and make those decisions as representatives of the people, not through the direct decisions made by the people. I would make one note on that point. I had, I had to go through that decision making in January of 2021, as did you, and make a decision that I had to then go explain to the people of my district why I made a choice, because that's how this works in a republic. Do you want to yield? 
Yes. I yield to the gentleman from Louisiana. In six seconds, democracy is two wolves and a lamb deciding what's for dinner. Hey, before you click on the next video, if y'all could do me a big favor and hit that like button. The algorithm loves it, and so do I, because it helps promote these videos and get the message out about what our government has been doing. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on your notifications, because every time I put out a video, you want to know about it, right? Thanks again. And have a good one. See you on the next one. Peace.